Hey y'all, it's Andrew Reed with Monster Creek Mushrooms, and today I want to go over the goat mix. What is the goat mix, you may ask? Well, it's the greatest of all time mix. I'm just kidding. We called it goat mix after the little straw goats that uh, are commonly found in Scandinavia around Yule Christmas time. Um, <laughs> and uh, we put them around our house for decoration. Uh, basically, the goat mix is the master's mix, but replace hardwood fuel pellets with straw pellets. The reason why we did this was because we were looking for a low lignin content um, carbon source for the mushrooms. We already knew that straw did well with oysters, right? The people, a lot of people started off growing oyster mushrooms on straw. Uh, the reasons for this is that straw is a selective substrate. Um, molds and bacteria, things like that, don't like growing on straw so much. More bacteria than mold um, until you supplement it which we're already growing in bags. So I was happy to find a, a straw pellet source in Seth Fisher of Mushroom Media Online. He shipped me a few pallets. Uh, first, he shipped me just a few bags. We did our test. And then he shipped me a few pallets. The reason why, we're going that way entirely for our oysters. We are getting a yield increase. Um, so basically it comes down to a slightly increased first and second yield. Um, a selective substrate that we already knew oysters grew well on and it's pelletized which means that it goes into our baggers just fine. I did nothing by the way when we created this recipe other than just pour straw pellets into Thor on the hardwood fuel pellet side and <laughs> it, it makes our bags a little heavier um, but even when accounting for that weight we are seeing higher yield so uh, we're getting about a half pound more straw in, you know solids in our bags than what we were so our bags are actually coming out to more like 13 pounds than the 12 pounds we've been getting before um, but our yields have been increasing you know more than a quarter pound on the first flush on average um, more than the uh, uh, well what was the second flush? I can't remember the second flush numbers all of a sudden but that's not really that important because we're getting quicker incubation and higher yields off of Sub substituting straw with um, or su substituting the hardwood fuel pellets with the straw. The way this came about was that we trialed pine out for a bunch of people because we knew uh, people were having a hard time with Douglas fir uh, or sourcing hardwood fuel pellets. They were switching to Douglas fir and a few other sources. And <clears throat> I trialed pine pellets for our conifer coral, but we ended up just running out a couple bags of tests for uh, mother of pearl and bear's head the bear's head for the pine pellets and this is exciting too we're just calling this the pine mix um <laughs> the, the pine the pine mix on bear's head we were getting about a pound more on our, our first flush for the hericiums that we've trialed out so far uh when we smell the pine you know the pellets uh, as they're hydrating we're not getting any Pine smell, my guess is the pressing process of uh, the pelletizing process squeezes out all of that pine resin. Um, but this led us to going, okay, what can we do for the oysters? Um, because I just, I still don't want to use pine for the oysters. We, uh, we trialed them out. We got a higher flush, on, a higher yielding flush on the oyster mushrooms using the pine mix. But I kind of felt like I could still smell a little bit of, of resin and I'm not sure that that was really there or I was, I was imagining it. But straw has done so well that we're sticking with straw. Because I can find straw in large quantities. I can have it shipped right to my docks. You can buy it in smaller quantities too from Seth and he will ship it to you. And uh, it ends up being something that you don't have to hide. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, the straw is just working really well for oysters. So what we're planning on doing is doing a small trial with pine pellets for our hericiums. So doing the pine mix for hericiums, doing the uh, straw pellets for our oysters. And that takes care of pretty much any, anything that we grow. Um, unless we want to do shiitake black poplar. I have not trialed black poplar on the straw. I will say the hericium didn't like it. So this is definitely an oyster mix. Um, but, and I haven't traveled the shiitake on it yet, I'm going to, but so far to say I just, right now I'm going to keep my specialties as hardwood for right now. There had been a small shortage of hardwood fuel pellets across the nation. And I think that's fixed now, because um, I've not been having any trouble getting them, but still, straw is the way I'm going. So, I really thought that you guys would enjoy the goat mix. 
for the increased yields and it's it's so easy to get and it's just as easy as using the hardwood fuel pellets uh, for those of you who have infrastructure to shred straw, straw in large amounts you can easily buy hay bales and do a large, large amount of shredding we don't have the space for that here it's way too dusty i used to do it i don't want the straw boogers but having it in pellet form makes it just as easy as anything else i'm doing and i just really wanted to share that with you guys um, I thought for sure you would want to know. I've had a lot of questions about the goat mix that we use for the oysters and uh, um, <laughs> I figured it's now time to share it now that it's tested and, and we know a bit about it. So, And with that y'all, make sure you hit that thumbs up button if you like the content. Uh, please hit subscribe if you want to see more. I've got a lot of cool stuff coming out uh, on the weekly now so just make sure you're subscribed so you get updates whenever we're coming on uh, or when we're doing Q&A's on the live streams. So also we're planning on doing a weekly podcast every Wednesday 4 p.m. to 4 30 p.m. depending on what how many technical difficulties I have <laughs> um, starting on the YouTube channel. So that's be every Wednesday 4 to 4 30 is when it'll start um, and we're gonna have different guests. Sometimes it'll just be us talking. Sometimes it'll be, um, you know, like last week we had Eric Lohman of Main Cap and Stem on there. So if anybody would like to be on the podcast, you guys feel like you've got something to offer, please just contact me and let me know. Um, we'll see if we can about uh, setting up a date and time to get you guys on. So with that, y'all, keep spawning culture.